If you've ever played around with negative harmony before, then you probably understand that the basic concept is to use your key center as an axis and to flip notes or chords over that axis along the circle of fifths. But what if using that same axis, we created a refraction instead of a reflection? Each color of the visible light spectrum has a unique frequency. When white light hits a prism, these wavelengths slow down, causing the colors to separate and exit the prism at a different angle. The basis of both light and sound are waves, so what would happen if we applied the same concept of refraction to sound waves instead of light waves? Refraction is calculated using something called Snell's Law. The interface between the two surfaces of refraction is labeled as the x-axis, and a perpendicular line to this is labeled as the y-axis. Both the original entry angle of the wavelength and its refracted angle are measured against the y-axis, and the formula lets you calculate those angles, like light moving through air and then through water. Since the circle of fifths is, well, a circle, it should be simple enough to label each note with degrees, draw our axes, and then calculate a refraction of the original angles. For the substance at the angle of entry, or N1, I used the media index of air, which is 1.00029. I later also tried using the index of a vacuum, which is just one, and the results are the same to three decimal places, so you can ultimately use either. For the second substance, N2, it made most sense to me to use the same number that the circle of fifths is built on, which is three over two. I also tried using the real original number of the circle of fifths, which is phi, but once again, they yielded practically identical results. Now, let's make some music. To give the notes context and to keep everything consistent, I will use a 2-5-1 cadence in C major and refract only the dominant chord, G, B, D, F, and sometimes A flat. Now, how to actually refract this chord? We know that our refracted angles won't fall into the same place as our original angles or notes, so we have to find a way to split the circle of fifths into smaller parts. I would love to get some microtonal things happening, so let's try labeling the circle with hertz. If we use only the notes in the A4 octave, then we get C at 262 hertz, G at 392 hertz, D at 294, okay, this is troubling, 440A, of course, all right, well, okay, we can see where this is going. Obviously, it's not really linear, it doesn't have a progression clockwise or counterclockwise, it's just kind of a mess. All right, let's try this instead. If we start with a very low C around 16 hertz, then we can go up by a fifth and get G around 24 hertz, D around 36 hertz, A at 55, and now we can start to continue clockwise and have numbers that are also going clockwise, which makes a lot more sense. There's just one problem. If we imagine that C is at zero degrees on our circle and G is at 30 degrees, then we can say that 30 degrees of change equals around eight hertz. But if we look at the difference between B flat and F, which is also 30 degrees of change, then we have over 400 difference of hertz. And this isn't even using just intonation. The problem is that our circle of fish should really be more like a spiral because an octave uses a two to one ratio and a fifth uses a three to two ratio and two to the power of X can never equal three to the power of X and our whole system is flawed and broken Okay, let's try splitting the circle in a more functional way. A chord wheel has the regular circle of fifths on the inner ring, but with two added outer rings that fill out the notes of the key. You can see the area outlined around E flat, which has all of the notes in that tonality. This gives us more notes to translate our refracted angles into. So since we are staying in the key of C, we can draw our x-axis through here at zero degrees, and our y-axis perpendicular to that. Using Snell's law, the note G can be given the value of 60 degrees. Even though it's at 30 degrees on our wheel, remember we have to measure how far it is from the Y axis, not the X axis. We can continue to measure each note of our dominant chord the same way and get these values. When we plug those numbers into our equation, we can find the refracted angles of our new notes. Remember, these angles are telling us how far away from the Y axis our new notes are, not where they are on the circle. Each note has to pass through the center of the circle, so the notes from the top right will now be on the bottom left, and vice versa. This means that our new notes are at the following points on the wheel. Now we can translate those angles into notes. For example, the refraction of G will be at 235 degrees on the wheel, which is where we have the light blue A flat, G, and C. Now we have to figure out how to arrange these notes. If we look at all of the notes we could use, we have almost each note possible in the chromatic scale. 
we can organize which notes to use better by remembering our key shape of C major. If we use only the inner will notes, then we get A flat, B flat, F, E, and B natural in parentheses because that is the ninth, which I didn't use when recording the notes. Here's how that sounds in the C major cadence. If we use the same circle relationship, meaning if it's on the inner ring in our key, then we also use the refracted note from the inner ring, the middle ring stays in the middle, etc. Then we get A flat, A, F, and E, which sounds like this. And if we use an inverse relationship, meaning that the outer ring becomes the inner ring and vice versa, then we get G, B flat, F, and D sharp. which I guess is kind of like a G minor 13th chord that's missing some notes. I don't have a piano, so I recorded all of these on a synthesizer, and I'm not even sure if I picked the best voicings possible, so I highly recommend that you try them out on your own instrument. This was cool, but if this is supposedly an idea building off of negative harmony, then I guess we really should have put the X axis between C and F. Don't worry, I'll make this quick and do all of the work for you. One thing that kind of blew my mind is that if we only refract the root of the chord, we go from the orangish G major to the blue B minor, which is the same result you would get in negative harmony, but on a totally different spot of the wheel. So it shows that negative harmony is really strong and that there's a lot of internal symmetry in the circle of fifths that we don't always see. This is how it sounds, by the way. And now, once again, here is the inner circle only. Using the same circle relationship. Using the inverse relationship. And finally, just a random combination that I liked. One last thing that I tried with the key wheel was using the entry angles from the key shape. So instead of starting with the big notes from the inner circle, I used these ones. And here are where those notes come out. And they sound like this. All right, so before we call it a day, I have one more idea and stick with me because this is the coolest one. What if we go back to the simple circle of fifths, but then fill it out with half steps? This means that between C and G, we would have C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, and F sharp. Since one fifth equals 30 degrees, now one half step will equal 30 sevenths of a degree. I also tried this with the axis between C and F, but it was much more complicated with 168 parts and nothing that sounded particularly great. I won't fill out the whole circle because I'm not sure it would even fit on this screen, so just imagine all of the notes chromatically moving clockwise. That gives us these new angles of our dominant chord, leading to refraction, new angles, you know. This time I refracted both a major and minor ninth because they're pretty, you know? Why not? Let's live a little. What I got was so cool and honestly a lot closer uh, to what I was expecting when I had this idea, which is that G, B, D, F, a flat becomes G, A, B, C, D. So basically our root is staying the same and we're just having all of the colors of the spectrum, all of the notes in order A, B, C, D come out on top. And it sounds so pretty. And then if we do that with G, B, D, F, A natural, it's really cool because we get the same notes on the bottom, of course, but instead of D, we get an E flat. So now we have the same idea before, except we also have a tritone built into it, which I love. Ah, listen to that. Isn't that beautiful? The colors of the spectrum. In the end, I'm still left with a lot of really interesting questions about this concept. Is it possible to apply it in a way that makes sense with microtuning or just intonation? Is there a better way to use this concept or a way that sounds better? And if all of the notes that we have in our tuning system are the colors of our spectrum and the circle of fifths is a prism, then what is white like?